a, a man addicted to sexual relations and then the idea that Hanukkah is the consummation of the Messiah. Just, I don't know, just an interesting thought there. Especially because, yeah. especially because the Messiah that leads Christianity is a lawless one yeah. who denies okay. true love, which is obedience to the commands. Okay, yeah, and there's a there's going to be a whole lot of stuff here, and you know we're going to gross you out. I told you we're going to gross you out here because I can never forget. It. Go to Leviticus Leviticus eighteen twenty one. Let's see if I got the right verse this time. Well, while she's looking for that, it's Acts seven forty three is the verse we were talking about earlier. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, Leviticus eighteen what? Twenty one. You shall not give any of your offspring to offer them to Molech, nor shall you profane the name of your Elohim. I am Yehovah. So, in my version says, you shall not let any of your, your seed pass through Molech. Your seed, that's your, your children, your firstborn, your, your sons and your daughters. And to pass them through Molech, it means that on December 25th, the darkest day of the year, they would light up this statue, and the statue would be sitting there with his hands outstretched. And they would be slightly curved down or leaning down a little bit. And they would put live babies on his hands. But they wouldn't do it until they got this statue glowing red hot. So the back was hollowed out. They put fires in the back until they got the whole statue to turn a glowing red. So they would put these babies, infants, on his hand that were red hot. And in a couple minutes, the babies would shrivel up, screaming with pain, being burnt alive, and then they would roll off into a pit down below and then they would take the next baby and put it on there and roll off down into the pit below burnt alive and they would do the next one and the next one and the next one and they would do that all day December 25th all day long until they sacrifice all these newborn infants sometimes they put on young children on their four five six seven years old tie up their feet and hands put them on there and they would burn up and scream, and they find these pits throughout the Middle East now, with all these little babies, all in a pile in the bottom. That's hideous. And the majority of this these, is, the newborns sorry? were conceived in the spring. At Easter. Yeah, in the Ishtar. At the orgy of Easter. Yeah. So nine months later is now, and you get rid of them now, the unwanted children. Christmas is for children. This is what it's for. It's for the destruction of the children. That's why we have today um, abortions. It's the same thing. When they said passing your children through the fire, this is what he's talking about. Don't pass your children through the fire. And God says, I never even thought of this. And that's what Israel was doing. Because that's what the Ammonites did. That's what the Moabites did. That's what the Canaanites did. They passed their children through the fire. They put them in the hands of Molech, this sexual pervert, Nimrod. And they burned up the children because Nimrod destroyed his children from being taken over his throne for him. It's the same stuff uh, going on. It's just packaged differently. Yeah. And, and so in order to stop the 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 agony of the parents who gave birth to this child a day, two, a week, or a month before, from hearing the screams of the child, they would have the drums drumming. And they would be going so loud that you could never hear the child's screams of horror and pain. This is what they did in the um, Gihon Valley. And I'm trying to think of the name. The name just escaped me. Uh, Gehenna? <laughs> No, no, it's Hino? there's another name. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll think of it probably after we sign off. This is where Solomon built his temple to Shemosh for one of his wives, one of his 700 wives or 300 wives and 700 concubines. Shemosh. Shemosh is another name for Molech. 
another God that Solomon passed his children through the fire. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, passed his children through the fire to this God, Mola, to Satan at the end of his life. And that's when Solomon lost his, who who who'd seen God personally uh, two, two times or three times in his life, talked to him personally. Solomon did this. And you want to bring this into your house with that little Christmas tree, with that little Santa Claus, with that little Hanukkah bush, that little Hanukkah uh menorah because that's what you're bringing into your house that's what you're doing by when you do this you defile your house you defile yourself you defile your family and that's why you're having these problems because you're inviting these demons into your house when you do this stuff wow when this were... is heavy duty stuff and it's, it's something that you do every year yeah, when you were talking about Molech, I just had an image of being at the mall and seeing this line of kids waiting in line to sit on Santa's lap. And yeah. it's the image image is there. <laughs> don't I don't even want to go to that image. But yeah. Um let's see what there it is. Second Kings twenty three ten. Found it. Second Kings twenty three ten. All right. Do you want me to read that? Yep. He also defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter pass through the fire for Molech. And this is talking about Josiah. Yeah. So Hosea destroyed this Topheth. This is what Topheth is. Go and look up Topheth. Go and study Topheth. Expand it out. It's in the Gehenna Valley. That's the valley of Ben Hinnon. Gehenna. Tophet. That's where they did this. So when I walk down this valley, as I get down near the bottom, I think about this. This is the place where they stood there on the statue. They brought all their infants. They put them in these red hot hands until they screamed. Now, when Israel got chased out of uh, Israel by the Assyrians and captured, a bunch of them fled to uh, Carchemish, which is on the north coast of Africa. I think where Tunisia is now. And they set up this statue again, only bigger. And it became a national symbol for the entire Mediterranean Sea. Israel did this. And when the Romans found this, they were so grossed out by it that they destroyed that whole land and they salted the earth so that nobody would ever do this or live there again. But then the Romans started taking on the same holiday in a different shape. Wow. You know, when Jehovah said, do not add to my Torah, do not add. It says it in Revelation 22, I think it is. Anyone who adds to this book shall receive a curse. You don't add to Torah. Yeah. You don't add Christmas. You don't add Easter. You don't add Hanukkah. You don't add a Hanukkah bush. You don't add a Christmas tree. You don't add balls. You know, the balls either, represent the testicles of Nimrod. And either way, if you add or take away, you're going to fall off that narrow road. That is his word. Yeah. You know, I got a, I got a post here today from somebody. Yeah. The fact that there's a highway to hell and there's only a stairway going to heaven. Yeah. It tells you something about, you know, broad is the way that leads to, to damnation. Yep. But narrow is the gate going to Jehovah. So we got to be careful what we do. These are tests. Remember, we started in the first part of the show talking about tests. Are you going to love Jehovah? No, we're going to just bring Jesus back in the Christmas. Well, that's not loving Jehovah. Yeah. That's following Satan. No, we're going to keep Hanukkah. We're going to keep the pure Hanukkah, like the Maccabees did. But that's not following Jehovah. That's following Satan. Hmm. You know, Joseph, You're it's interesting. You bring, 
when when you're bringing you, demons into your house by doing that. Sorry, man. yeah. Go well, ahead. no, I, I just was thinking it's interesting because if you judge a tree by its fruit, you know Stephen was calling calling these people out for worshiping uh, idols, basically. And to, and today, when you call out Hanukkah, the fruit that's brought out of the people who stand for that holiday is much the same. It's hatred. It's it's accusations. It's uh, I mean, it, it's just it's absolutely nuts to see. I mean, literally, it's like these people would stone us if they if that was acceptable in our culture today because we're calling out their mighty ones and their holidays that are not in Torah. So, what they're doing is exact. Well, here's an, I got another verse here in Ezekiel. Ezekiel twenty three thirty nine, and Krista, if you want to go there and read it, it, but they're doing exactly the same thing today as they did then. You know. They 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 worship or they slay their children at Molech on December 25th or Hanukkah, and then the next day they come into the temple and make their sacrifices as if it's all normal to do both. For when they had slaughtered their children for their idols, they entered my sanctuary on the same day to profane it, and lo, thus they did within my house. They'd mix Jehovah's worship with the worship of Molech and thought that that was all fine and we do it today many people are keeping torah and yet they see nothing wrong with adding other holy days other satan's satanic days of hanukkah of purim of easter of christmas of molech's birthday which is december 25th and they think nothing of it and then they go and want to keep passover and they think, well, this is fine and dandy. This is nice. I'm being very holy. I'm being very righteous. You know, I've kept all these holidays. And they do not realize that Jehovah says, I don't know you, you workers of lawlessness. Oh, wow. Well, you know, hopefully you guys understand the seriousness of, of, of this time of year and choose wisely. Uh, so, anyways, thanks again for tuning in to Side Moon. Until next time, we say shalom. Sighted Moon. For articles, videos, and updates, visit sightedmoon.com.